to go to four different freaking stores to find these. They're not easy to get in America, you know. Tim Tams. Everyone keeps talking about Tim Tams all of a sudden. Tim Tam this, Tim Tam that. Apparently there's some kind of Pokemon Tim Tam thing. I mean, I can't... I can't see any Pokemon things in here. I can see something poking right now. Your what? nipples are very don't, prominent no, in that shirt. No, that's fine. <laughs> but Kimberly, I don't get it. What, what's all this Tim Tam business all of a sudden? I don't think they're saying Tim Tam. I think they're saying Tim Tam. Tim Tam? Yeah, the game. That can't be all right. That's too stupid. Oh, these are good. Tim Tam? Tim Tam. Okay, Tim Tam, not Tim Tam. Not Tim Tam. So Tam Tam, not Tim Tam, is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game or MMORPG made and inspired by Pokemon. And by inspired by, I mean like how Ant was inspired by Bug Life. It's pretty much the same thing. However, Tim Tam has been heavily praised not only by Pokemon fans, but by non-Pokemon fans, those non-Pokemon fans being non-Pokemon fans because of issues they have with Pokemon that apparently Tim Tam aims to address and uh, do better. And there is a lot of things I really love about Tim Tam, elements they've shaken up over the traditional Pokemon formula to make it feel fresh and honestly better in some areas. But before we talk about all the things I love in Temtem, there is one main elephant in the room I feel like I have to address. And again, it goes into what my expectation was for the game. Temtem isn't exactly what I thought it would be. And I think that's in one part due to the fact that everyone was calling it a better Pokemon game. And the other part being the game refers to itself as an MMORPG. That's the main like tagline for this. It's an MMORPG Pokemon game. You see, massively multiplayer leads me to think that I'm entering an expansive world where I see and interact with hundreds of other players while we catch and battle together. And that sounds awesome. It sounds like a better Pokemon game to me, and it's what I was accidentally expecting. And it's not that though, at least not yet. I mean, the game is still unfinished, which I'm an idiot and I didn't know that when I bought it. The game isn't fully releasing for a few months and I'm not sure of what the future plans are, but for now, the closest thing you can get to playing with friends is inviting one friend into your Temtem game and playing it co-op. Other than that, you can see other players' ghosts running about their separate games and doing their own things as you play. They aren't technically in your world though, or even in a shared world, which is made obvious in some locations like in this gym where I'm trying to puzzle platform Frogger style and the other characters are clearly just running in midair, or in their game, they're actually on platforms. And I'm not even 100% convinced that any of these players can actually see me. As I've tried endlessly to emote and wave at other players without any anyone reacting back. Hello darkness, my old friend. And even if they can see me, clearly playing online isn't the focus for anyone here. Rather than that, they're just going about their own games, which the games are still very linear and similar to the 3DS Pokemon games, with the small towns and routes between them. Actually, it follows the traditional Pokemon formula really closely, almost identically at times. You start in a small town, living with your mom, you go see the professor and they let you choose between one of three Pokemon, then you have to battle your rival out front and he has a robot Pikachu Temtem, and then you set out on your adventure to catch all the Temtem stopping in Poke Centers and gyms along the way. Or... Tem centers and dojos in this game. And again, none of this is inherently a bad thing. I understand if the devs wanted to play it a little safe here, but I really feel like they could have shaken up the formula a teensy tiny bit more to make it feel more like Temtem is its own thing and not a Pokemon game. It just kind of feels like Pokemon! I was at least expecting the battling to be a little bit different. I mean, especially, again, with that MMORPG in the title. I kind of figured it would be more of an open world, real-time battling, but it's it's exactly the same turn-based fighting. The animations are absolutely improved, are detailed and gorgeous, but it essentially boils down to the same repetitive gameplay with the Temtem not actually connecting or interacting during the fights, rather just shaking their cute little booties and uh, lowering or raising attack and defense stats. All I'm saying is, if you're gonna go out of your way to create a better Pokemon alternative, at least make it 
different. I'm really trying not to be negative because I have all my positives coming, but honestly, even just a couple hours into this game when I'm out there on the route running around the grass, I, I instantly felt that similar Pokemon burnout sensation of I've done this before. It was a similar burnout feeling I felt just recently with Pokemon Sword and Shield. In fact, if this game, if Temtem is considered an MMORPG, then I would say that Sword and Shield should fall into the same category too, as those games did the exact same thing with the wild area, where you could see people running around but not really interact with them. I mean, when I hear MMORPG, I think of games like World of Warcraft, Terra, Final Fantasy Online. I mean, all the games that come up if you Google the word MMORPG. And it's fine, again, that it's not. I just wanted to mention it because I feel like I might not be the only one thinking that going into it, so before you drop $35 on a game that isn't quite what you think it is, and also a game that isn't quite finished yet, there is that. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about the positives very quickly, because I feel like dislikes have already been slam smashed on this. D does Temtem have the same uh, aggressive community that Pokemon has? We're about to find out. <laughs> if you still uh, aren't hating uh, the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, the 1 million is getting really close and with your help, we can make that happen. Okay, it's obvious immediately that this game is gorgeous looking. It is clean, it is crisp, it is beautiful. For a kickstarted game, mind you, this game looks amazing. And I really like the designs of the Temtem. I like that the three starting Temtem are all very different, apart from Crystal, who kind of reminds me of Bulbasaur, but hey, we won't get into that. But it was nice not picking between water, grass, and fire for once in a game like this. Rather, it was a crystal Pokemon, a fire Pokemon, and then like a psychic Pokemon, so it was different. Okay, so the biggest difference in Temtem, literally, I would say the main only real difference, everything else just being little differences, the biggest difference is in the battling. While if you were an outsider looking in, you didn't really know much about the rules of the game, you'd probably just think that it's the same as Pokemon. In fact, if you took Temtem and Pokemon and put them next to each other and showed your grandma, she'd probably just say they were both Pokemon. But when you actually start diving into the mechanics of Temtem, there is a lot that make these battles feel a lot better and more evolved and definitely a lot harder than Pokemon battles. The first being you don't have PP for your moves. You don't have a set amount of times you can use a certain move. Rather, you just have a shared mana pool or a stamina bar and each of your four moves on a Pokemon will take up a certain amount of stamina. And every turn, obviously you'll use more and more of that stamina until you get low. And then if you decide to use a move while you're low on stamina, it'll take it out of your health instead. You'll overexert your Pokemon and they will hurt themselves, but they'll still do the move and attack. But then next turn, if you overexerted the last turn, you can attack. You have to wait out the turn or switch out your Pokemon or do something else, but that Pokemon is exhausted. Alternatively, if you don't want to overexert your Pokemon, you can let them rest or again, switch them out before you use a move that would chip into their health and they can regain stamina that way. I really love this mechanic for a lot of reasons. I mean, well, the main one being it shakes up the gameplay, but on top of that, it allows you and other players to not spam your most powerful moves. You can't spam five fire blasts until you're out of PP. You can likely do one big move and then you're pretty exhausted. So you have to switch to little moves or rest after. Also, if I accidentally call any of these Temtem Pokemon or refer to Temtem as Pokemon at any point in this video, I'm sorry, it's really my brain. I don't know why I can't switch this over. Again, it feels so much like Pokemon. It took a while for these Temtem to become Temtem. That word sounded stupid to me at first, but I still confuse it. And the other really big difference in Temtem battles is they're always 2v2 battles, not 1v1. So even when you're just one trainer battling one trainer, you'll both throw out two Temtem. But Temtem doesn't just leave it at that with, oh, that's our difference, you have two rather than one. They actually found ways to synergize Pokemon together and make it so you certain combinations of Pokemon certain combinations of Temtem together work better than just two random Temtem. For example, synergized attacks. Like with my Crystal guy, if he's next to another nature Pokemon, his move, Glass Shard, I believe, sorry if I'm wrong, will get an extra boost and attack for like 20 more damage. There's a lot of strategy here and I really like this element too. It brings even more into the battle to think about and you can't really fly on autopilot all the time, especially not when the game is brutally hard. Maybe not brutally hard. Maybe I just picked bad Pokemon for the start. I managed to somehow end up with all nature Pokemon and the second gym was a fire gym. That was tough for me. <laughs> but the game is definitely harder in general. And I, one of my biggest complaints in Pokemon Sword and Shield is that the gym battles felt like nothing. They felt 
like no no challenge whatsoever. I don't understand how like Milo of the Grass Gym and Sword and Shield even became a gym leader with like three level 10 Pokemon that I can beat in two minutes. But the second gym in the Temtem, it KO'd me like three times in a row and I was forced to go grind and level up to come back even though my Pokemon were mostly higher leveled than his. Granted he was fire and I was grass. There's a little side quest you can get too and I really like that you can actually get side quests in this game and they start filling up the right screen with all this extra stuff you can do like finding someone's necklace and blah 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 blah. Some other random things I really like about the game is seeing your Temtem following you. Whichever Temtem you put in the first slot will follow you at your side. That's cool that you can pick anyone to be a little buddy. And the catching is cool. While it ultimately does equate to the same thing, you use cards rather than Pokeballs and you throw a card to release your Temtem in battles and then you throw a blank card at Wild Temtem and it wraps around them. It kind of bursts three times times as it's going down, kind of like how a Pokeball rocks three times. And if you manage to get through all the bursts, you will capture the Pokemon. It just looks really cool. It's all digitized. I like it. And then you do have things like shiny hunting, or they call it Luma hunting. I haven't found one yet. One of the gym leaders had one. That was the first time I even knew it was a thing. But then I learned how to breed Pokemon and now I've been trying to breed Pokemon. It's a lot slower breeding Pokemon in this game. They also have much stricter rules for how to breed. It needs to be the same nature type. Well, it's that's pretty much it. But that wasn't, that's not the case in Pokemon. You get the eggs a little slower. It takes a little longer to hatch them. At least it seems that way. Uh, in fact, the pacing in general in Temtem feels just, eh, it's a lot slower in every element than it is in Pokemon. And I don't know how I feel about that, but I did put it in my con section and we are pretty much at the con section. So let's move on to that. <laughs> I mean, it's an unfinished game. I feel like... That is the whole point of releasing an unfinished game is to draw feedback from people like myself and like you leaving comments and reviews and talking about the things we liked and disliked and I don't, maybe I'm wrong, maybe my opinion isn't what is best for this game. But I'm still going to voice that opinion because again, that is exactly why this game is in this stage. If you don't agree with me, you don't have to. Temtem doesn't have to agree with me, but these are the gripes that I had. And I don't, I feel like I'm being pretty fair, but you can let me know if I'm not below. So the first one is just because it's unfinished. Again, I wouldn't recommend anyone buying it yet unless you just really want to show support and then put your input into what needs to be done moving forward. It definitely felt like I was missing out playing through this as an unfinished game. Like even on the very first route, like like 10 minutes into the game, there was a bridge that said this area isn't finished yet, work in progress. And then on the second route, every single house on the route was a work in progress. I couldn't go into any of them and I can't help but feel like as the player, well, what's that supposed to be and what am I missing out on? So I feel like I'm missing an experience there and right now I've put 13 hours into the game and I'm already feeling like I should probably just stop because when the game gets fully released, I'm gonna have to start again because I want to know what I missed. Then yeah, but it's pretty, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> and then the only one which I find really strange uh, and it, uh, with, with the, it being unfinished, it's just something that I feel, why, why? Is, so you get all the quests, like I said, they fill up that, that right side of the screen, but as it fills up, you can only fit like three or four there, and then you lose all the other quests. And I must have like 10 to 15 other quests on this list, and I cannot remember all of them. And so you'd think, well, I'll check the quest log, but quest log ain't finished. It's just grayed out. You can't... That one's really strange to me. I mean, you don't make a, make a quest log. Why is there no quest log? What? That is so frustrating. I mean, there's not much going on in this game in general. It's it's literally all small towns and routes battling wild Pokemon and trainers. So the, the one thing that could make it feel fresh and, and less repetitive would be these side quests, but I can't see them and I can't remember them and I can't check a quest log, so... That's weird. But I think overall, it, it all kind of just felt slow and stale because leveling takes a long time. And I don't know if I just picked Pokemon that either don't evolve, Temtems, that either don't evolve or evolve really late, but in my 13 hours of playing, and mind you, that's battling the entire time, I evolved one Pokemon. And uh, that was my Butterfree. I don't know what it's called in this game, L Lolia or something, but essentially Butterfree. I mean, it starts as a Metapod that knows how to use Harden and then it evolves into a Butterfly. It's Butterfree. 
But to spend the amount of hours you would put into finishing a regular game and only really see the same 20 Pokemon over and over and over and over and over, Temtem, over and over and over and over again, it did feel really stale and really repetitive. Because Temtem utilizes wild Pokemon battles that just spring up. You can't see Pokemon in the wild like you can in Sword and Shield, which I feel like that's a step back for Temtem. The only place that Temtem really shines for mixing up the formula is in the battles. But ultimately Temtem for me ends up feeling like a very polished 3DS Pokemon game with some new ideas. But maybe this is exactly what a lot of you want from Pokemon games or what a lot of you expected and wanted from Temtem. I could be wrong. These are just my personal opinions. And sometimes I wonder if I should keep giving them. <laughs> so let me know yours below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some information on Temtem. If you were thinking about buying it, let me know if this has made up your mind or changed your mind. Either way, hit a flip on that subscribe button. And if I don't see you, good morning, good evening, and good night.